In our previous lectures, we introduced the concept of the self-driving car and talked about its different components. The real challenge starts now. In this lecture, we will talk about the hardware and software components and we will discuss the components of the self-driving car that we are going to build later in this course. Our focus will be on programmable and non-programmable components and the required software components for the self-driving car. The softwares that we will be talking about are Robot Operating System, or ROS, NVIDIA Jetpack, Arduino, OpenCV for coding, TensorFlow, and TensorRT. These softwares will help us implement movement, navigation, and other self-driving car features. Let's talk a bit about the hardware parts of an actual self-driving car. This figure shows different hardware requirements. As we mentioned in our previous lectures, robots need sensors to perceive their surroundings. A car would also require all these sensors that a car driver uses. A driver would scan the surroundings at all times to see if the road is clear or if there is a pedestrian on the side waiting to pass across the road, etc. While driving, we must comprehend our placement and the direction that we are moving. Manufacturers made real-time scenarios to develop a driver-like model that can drive itself with minimum assistance. Audi A7 is a well-known self-driving car that is on the roads even now. Here in this figure, you can see the different components used in recent self-driving cars. These are the radar, camera, LiDAR, the GPS tracking device, wheel encoder, onboard units, EMAPs, ultrasonic sensors, etc. This figure accurately represents the positioning of these different sensors as well. Let's go through each of these one by one. The first sensor is called LiDAR. As the name suggests, it detects surroundings using light imaging. Here you can see the one that you can find in the market, Opal P1000. You can search this model online and purchase it to use in your own project or coding assignments. The LiDAR stands for Light Imaging Detection and Ranging Device. It is used to detect surroundings using light imaging and create depth maps of the surrounding environment. Even though it uses light, it scans 360 degrees and provides similar efficiency at night as well. The second one is the ultrasonic sensor that is used sideways to detect any object standing on both sides. It has a major role while parking as accuracy plays an important role within tight spaces. Nowadays, most companies are using tight parking spaces and various weather conditions to benchmark the sensor's level of accuracy. An example sensor model, which is available on the market, is the Bosch ultrasonic sensor. Using this model, you can monitor the car's left and right sides. The third one is the camera. Different types of cameras are required for image processing and using deep learning libraries to identify surrounding objects, humans, and vehicles. A commonly used model for the camera is Bosch MPC that can also be used for deep learning based image processing for the tasks that include object detection, lane detection, pedestrian identification, vehicle information, and so on. These cameras are the eyes of the self-driving car. Our car will be seeing different sorts of objects and making different decisions based on what it has acquired as information. The fourth sensor is the wheel encoders. They are used for counting the wheel rotation and measuring the distance covered by the wheels. ZL Tech is an example model that can be found in the market. These encoders are rotating devices that provide values with each complete rotation. As a result, they are used to determine the distance, acceleration, and velocity of the car, and they can measure the distance covered by the vehicle with respect to time. The next one is the onboard CPU. It is considered as the car's brain, where all the processing tasks are carried out. NVIDIA driver AGX Orin is the model that you can find on the market as an onboard processor. NVIDIA has developed several onboard processing units that are very compact in size and perform on par with powerful modern day computers. The primary purpose of these processing units is to process the data received by the sensors. The sixth sensor is the radar. Radar stands for radio detection and ranging. It uses radio waves to detect the objects. It can also detect things that are not visible to the camera, such as the weather conditions like fog, smoke, rain, or it can detect objects where visibility is a challenge. URAD Automotive FMCW is a commonly used radar model. Finally, we have the GPS, which stands for Global Positioning System. A GPS tracks the vehicle's location on the map, so its main purpose is navigation. Clacyon FX450 is an example GPS. So we need all these components to produce a simple simulator-based car at our premises. In our model, there will be two main types of hardware that we will be using in this project. One is programmable and the other is non-programmable hardware. There are two fundamental units for programmable hardware. One is NVIDIA Jetson Nano and the other one is the Arduino. So here you can see both of them. Jetson Nano is our developer toolkit. It is very compact in size and it is capable enough to replace a powerful computer. 
We are all aware of the advancements in artificial intelligence, where the neural networks and image processing functions demand a high computing capacity. Considering such challenges, this mobile computer has been manufactured so that the tasks like speech processing, image processing, segmentation, classification, detection, and recognition become very fast. With a power rating of 5 watts, the Jetson Nano device is quite remote as well. It is useful for artificial intelligence algorithms on embedded devices. It has general purpose input output pins, which are our GPUs, that make it useful in both AI and electronics. The versatility of this computer does not end here. It has interfaces for both stereo and depth cameras called Connect. We are using this computer as our main processing unit where all sorts of deep learning based tasks will be handled. I encourage you to look into the details of the Jetson Nano as it has been on the market for a long time now. And it has a wide range of application areas like computer vision, image processing, speech recognition, medical imaging, bioinformatics, gene regulation and so on. Like the Jetson Nano, there are also different embedded Jetsons, such as Jetson Xavier, which is very popular nowadays. So, the other processing unit is the Arduino. I will be giving a brief introduction to the Arduino. It is a small microcontroller based on an AT Mega 328 with 14 input and output pins. These pins are configured in such a way to read not only analog but also digital signals as well. Such variety allows the user to introduce many different sensors to the system. The Arduino board also supports PWN, which is short for Pulse Width Modulation. It is quite helpful when controlling the speed of attached motors, and it is actually quite cheap. Such features make this board ideal for a robotic system. Why are we using this board? Because it is compatible with the Robotic Operating System ROS, that we will be using while implementing our self-driving car. Let's move on with the non-programmable hardware components. They are called non-programmable as they do not require any programming. I'll go over them one by one. First, we will need the body chassis and wheels. Then we need the batteries, motors, encoders, motor driver shield, voltage regulators, Intel RealSense camera and the OpenCV AI kit. Here in this figure you can see different parts of non-programmable hardware. The first one is encoder motors. So it's a pair of embedded encoder motors that utilize the encoder for rotation measurement. Encoders are usually used in a way that change value whenever land distances are covered. Since our robot will be a small one, we are going to use pilot rotation for direction change. We need the encoder to handle this rotational information. Then we have the motor driver shield. The motor driver shield is used to drive different motors but uses a separate driver to control a DC motor through direct pins or the Arduino. Arduino Uno Mega usually uses a chip voltage regulator to regulate the voltage going through a pin. The ampere or power consumption of a motor is proportional to the torque of the motor that can cause a greater load on the on-chip regulations, leading them to their discharge state. This task is achieved by a motor driver that regulates the voltage while taking commands from the Arduino. Another non-programmable component is batteries, which will be used as the power source with 4500 milliampers. We will also use a Kinect camera for depth measurement. Kinect is a well-known device used for measuring the depth for a specific scene. We will be using a Microsoft Xbox emulator gadget, which is also used for playing games. Similarly, its voltage would be around 12 watts. In addition to all these, we will need other devices, such as the Intel RealSense camera and OpenCV AI kit. We will use the version Intel RealSense T265, and it will be used for tracking the positioning of the car. The Intel RealSense camera has two fisheye lens cameras that can be used as a regular camera as well. Next, we will be using SLAM, a mechanism used for simultaneous localization and mapping. The SLAM uses a combination of cameras and inertial measurement units to navigate. Similarly, it uses visual features in the environment to accurately track its way around unknown spaces. The motivation behind the SLAM was for sailors to find their location by the movement of stars. Most of the time, the plug-in for the Intel RealSense is done through a USB interface, which is available on most of the devices these days. The OpenCV AI kit is an excellent option that can be used as an alternative device as SLAM is more expensive. It is a small device with an already configured camera. It can also provide different functionalities of OpenCV, such as object detection, lane detection, vehicle identification, etc. We will be using this kit during this course. If you'd like to specialize in self-driving cars, then check out our free self-driving car nano course on augmented startups. Links are all down below.